Hello and welcome back to another Django tutorial. This tutorial is focused on securing Django on deployment. So I've gone ahead and deployed a really simple application, one that you might follow from any tutorial online, and I've deployed it to Heroku. I've used all the default settings uh, as you might be shown in any type of tutorial online. And then I'm going to go ahead and then use Observatory by Mozilla, which is a simple service which is going to scan the website and then return any vulnerabilities that it's found. So once we've assessed and tested a Django deployment for vulnerabilities, we'll then just explore some of the solutions to the known vulnerabilities. So like many of the tutorials here, we'll be delving into the Django documentation, having a look to see what Django can offer us to protect the website and secure our deployment. So before we start, let's just uh, make sure that you understand what this tutorial is. This is a development tutorial to help support you to start learning about how to configure Django safely and securely for deployment. Needless to say, you're going to need a Django application to scan. So you're going to need to upload a Django application, any application to Heroku or any other web server so that you can scan it. So once you've done that, there are some links in the description if you want to go ahead and deploy your existing application. Of course, you can use any of the guides on this channel and deploy any of those if you want to. So once you've got your website up and running, you just need to enter the domain name right here. If you haven't used Observatory before, it pretty much tells you what it does right here. You can, there's some additional options here that you can select or deselect depending on what you want to do or what you want to scan. So let's go ahead and just add something here. And you can see I'm using Heroku here. And I'm going to scan that. And there we go. So we've got a, a minus D, which isn't too good. Um, we've got a score of 25 out of 100 and 7 out of 11 tests passed. So the first thing you can see straight away and what is a general recommendation now for any site that you deploy online is to utilize HTTPS by default. So this is something that you're going to when you deploy your website to configure on your website. Now Django does come with a setting so that you can forward any HTTP traffic to HTTPS. Obviously that's also managed by your DNS settings so you can automatically forward any HTTP traffic to your HTTP website. So that's something that you can do. Obviously it's out the scope here of this tutorial. This is just for information and for you to kind of maybe make a checklist to ensure that you've got that in place. So you should really be utilizing HTTPS where you can when you deploy a website. If we move over to the documentation, it's basically just a repeat of what I just said here. So we should ideally be utilizing HTTPS. And once that's configured, you can see that there's two settings that you might want to configure, the CSRF cookie secure and the session cookie secure. So in your settings file, you'd add these to maybe the bottom of the page. And they essentially just are going to protect you from transmitting cookies over HTTP accidentally. So that hopefully gives you some information and some guidance there to ensure that you set up HTTPS on your server. Now, most deployments or most servers that you will deploy to will have this tool or facility. It will be free most of the time. So you can definitely just go ahead and apply that. Just follow the server guidance or the um, provider's guidance on how to set that up on your website. So next up, let's have a look at the test scores. Okay, first up, we've got the content security policy, right? So we need to set some CSP headers. They've not been implemented. So let's go into the Django documentation and have a look at how to set these. So if you've got time, definitely go ahead and just read through the MDM web docs here, the content security policy, just to give yourself an overview. But if I were just to summarize it for you, what the content security policy is and does and helps us, it basically adds a layer of security that helps to detect and mitigate the um, XSS attacks and data injection attacks. So essentially what's happening here with our content security policy is exactly that. 
we're creating a security policy for our content. So on our Django or in our Django application, we have CSS, JavaScript, and fonts that are being loaded into the page. Now, most of the time, we know that these files, we've created them ourselves and they're just loading in. But sometimes we utilize different packages uh, and services that we're not entirely sure where the CSS is coming from or what's being utilized and so on. So to help protect us from utilizing packages and ensuring that we only load resources from the source, uh, our server that we know we've uploaded secure files to, then the CSP, the Content Security Policy, we're going to define where resources can be loaded from. So by default, Django doesn't provide us this. So we need to download this package called Django CSP. So you go ahead and download that. And again, you can go ahead and have a look at the different security settings here. But essentially this list here, you just need to run through this list and have a look to see what it is that you need to apply in your settings. So to give you an idea of some of the different attributes that you might want to utilize here, so just selecting some of these different options here that you'd apply in your settings file. Um, you can see here, these pretty much make sense if you read through the style. So where do we want the styles to be loaded from self? So from our server, any scripts, any images, any fonts. So here, essentially, all we're saying is that these should be loaded from the server. So just reiterating again, we're trying to protect and ensure that all the files fonts, images, and scripts, etc. they're all being loaded from the server and not from a third party source, maybe someone trying to hack the website. So let's head back down our test scores here. So we don't have any cookies yet on our server or on our website, and we're not using DRF, so we're not using the core files or headers here. So that's probably something that we need to look at later or in a different package. So let's just move down to the HTTP strict transport security. So we need to head back into the Django documentation. There's just a few settings that we need to configure in the settings file and understand what this does. So we move back into the Django documentation for this one. And you can see here, we've got the HTT strict transport security, HSTF. Uh, so basically it is a HTTP header that informs a browser that all future connections to a particular site should always use HTTPS. So here we have two settings. The first is the secure HSTS second. So if our server was trying to serve files through the HTTPS protocol and not HTTPS, as we've been setting up, as we've set up our server to do, then basically the browser is going to refuse to connect to your site for a given period of time. And that time is set here in the secure HSTF seconds. So to summarize, imagine you've set up your website for HTTPS and for some reason your resources weren't being served through HTTPS, they were trying to be uh, sent through HTTP, then there's an issue. So, so the browser is gonna back off for the set amount here and maybe the settings will change on the server, and then it's going to try again to access the resources. Apologies, I said there was two settings, there's three settings. So the next is the secure HT, HSTC include subdomains. So that's really um, describing what this does. So we're just going to essentially include subdomains if we're using subdomains on our site. So in addition to our main domain, we're also going to apply HSTS to our subdomains. You can see that this is going to be set up using a Boolean, true or false. So let's move to the next and the last item here, secure HSTS preload. So again, this is going to be a true or false setting that we're going to configure. So there we go. We now have three items or three new settings to be placed in our settings file in our project. So next up, we seem to have a problem here uh, does not redirect to HTTPS site. So again, this is just a case of ensuring that we're utilizing HTTPS to begin with. So let's see what we can do to rectify this. And here we go. So if we go back into the Django settings documentation here, 
we can see the secure SSL redirect. So by default, it's false. So we need to change this again. We're going to add this to the settings file. So if true, the security middleware. So we need to make sure that our security middleware is placed in our settings file also. But this is going to redirect all non-HTTPS requests to HTTPS. You can see that there is an exception here uh, for regular expressions. Uh, so be careful of that. But essentially, now we just need to go into the settings file of our project. And here it is. So this is the setting that we're going to need. Secure SSL redirect. Remember, by default, it's false. We're going to add that to true. So remember, this is only applies if you are going to apply HTTPS throughout your website, which is obviously now a recommendation. So go ahead and just open an application, one of your Django applications, and there's some other checks that we can provide or do directly from Django. So if we just type into our terminal, into a project, we're going to be utilizing a check deploy. So managed by check deploy. And that's going to give us a list or warnings that we might want to consider. And notice here, it's actually defining the secure HSTS settings. So that hasn't been configured. So we we'll go ahead and do that, of course. Uh, but that's just a, another resource for you to check your deployment before you actually deploy it. OK, so at that point, it's worth them running through the deployment, deployment checklist here on the documentation, Django documentation. Essentially, what we've run there is trying to check for some of these settings here. So as you go down, some of these might become a little bit more familiar, but there's some very specific information here that's going to help you protect your deployment or your application on deployment. So there we go. There's a entry point to start safely and securely deploying Django on a server. So there we have a, an initial entry point for configuring Django safely and securely for deployment. So I appreciate there's a, a number of different reading topics there and areas to explore. And hopefully I've just really planted the seed for you now to start thinking about deployment. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been going through on this channel a few different applications and we have been starting to deploy our application. So I thought it was safe and the right time to introduce this tutorial so that you can start thinking about this when you start deploying your applications. Of course, this is just the start of helping and supporting you deploy Django. It was never going to be the case where we could have one tutorial to overcome all the issues that you might need to tackle when deploying safely. So like I said, hopefully this was just an introduction to get you started, to point you in the right direction and with support and back this up by other tutorials in the future. Again, thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.